truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. Hey, y'all know what time it is, man. It's another episode of the ugly truth. And y'all know what the truth do, right? The truth shall set you free yes indeed man yes indeed man morning episode man uh speaking to an excellent great person last night and had an awesome revelation for y'all today right real good revelation so we're gonna call it today we're gonna try to keep it as brief as possible y'all don't even have standards y'all have no standards Y'all have goals and desires. I'm going to tell you why. And if we need to, we could pull up the definition of standard, right? Let's just look at it like this, right? A standard is something you're used to. There's no way you can have a standard of a five-star restaurant, but you've never been. That is a desire or a goal. A standard is this is what I am used to. This is what I am accustomed to. This is what I've been knowing for a long period of time. That's a standard. You're used to it. You're accustomed to it. You vibe out with it. You know this. A goal is usually something that you've never had or haven't got frequently because you, you didn't have it as a goal most of y'all have desires y'all have a conjured ideal in your mind of what you think the way you might feel if you get this thing if you obtain this go ahead y'all can ask hey what is you what is you talking about i i, I want to ask y'all those who have all of these standards have you ever had it before ha have you had what you're talking about that's 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 all i want to know have you ever had it so what we talking about real quick let's pull up the definition of standard real quick i, I i'm a definition person super big definition person because i like to know the exact definition not what you know we make up in our minds and conjure up in our minds so let's go ahead to it a level of quality or attainment. Let's stop right there. Their restaurant offers high standard of service. Where can they get this from? It is a repetitive thing. They offer high standard of service. That means they do this on a regular. Ma'am, if you've never had a million dollar nigga, a million dollar nigga can't be your standard. Y'all hollering, y'all got high standards and never had it. Oh, I want a nigga to do this. He got to be able to do this. He got to do this. He got to do this. He got to make the money. He got to provide. He got to talk to me this way. He got to do this. That's not your standard, sweetheart. You know why? Your baby daddy wasn't that. The last four niggas you slept with wasn't that. So please tell me, how in the world is this your standard and you never had it? Now, Y'all know most of us men go to sports. A person who's never won a championship, their standard is not a championship. That's their goal. The standard only becomes the standard once you obtain it, and I would say more than once. So Kobe Bryant's standard was championship every year. Michael Jordan's standard was like, hey, championship every year. LeBron's standard is usually championship every year. It don't mean they obtain it. They mean they've already had it more than once. And so now they're saying, hey, man, we ain't accepted nothing less than championship. And if they fall short, they was in the playoffs. You can't talk to us if you never even been to the playoffs to be talking about championships. Many of y'all ain't never even been in the playoffs as an engagement. The championship is marriage. Y'all can't even say y'all got a standard and y'all hoes can't even keep a relationship for six months. Y'all don't have niggas beating y'all doors down to fall in love with y'all. You understand me? So I wanted to debunk this whole, oh, this is my standard. No, that's your goal. 
It's not your standard. That's your desire. Now, let's pull up desire real quick. Because I know many of y'all don't know what definitions is. You know, y'all go off of what y'all think something means. We're going to pull up desire. The definition of desire. Ooh. Let's hit them real quick. A strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. <laughs> it's debunked. It's debunked. Y'all have a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Boy, oh boy, I, I, I'd have cracked the code for y'all. So y'all can miss us with this is your standards. Oh, uh, uh, y'all want us to lower our standards. No, ma'am. We want you to be realistic and be used to what you used to and tell us you got a desire and not a standard. You know why? Because the standard means you'd have had it before. You're used to it. You've tapped in with it. Now, you, you can be a person who, let's just say every five years for the last 15 years, you get a new Mercedes. You get a new form. You started with the C. You got to the E. You dig what I'm saying? Now you worked your way up. You got a truck. You got a little GLE now. You dig what I'm saying? You can say your standard is foreign. You can say your standard is luxury. You can say your standard is Mercedes. Because you've had those cars three times. Those are your standards. You can't holler Rolls Royce is your standard when you've never had a Rolls Royce. Now, if you got a Bentley... If you got other supercars that's in that in that caliber, yes, th th there's calibers. Mercedes and Rolls Royce are not in the same caliber. Those are two different types of vehicles. They both add luxury, but we're talking two different types of vehicles, two different price points. You dig value. So I would say this for your standards. For you to get your desires and be able to get to your standard, you got to put the work in. So what did Kobe, Jordan, and everybody else do who won championships? They worked overtime. They put the work in. They absolutely exhausted themselves to get to the goals that they wanted to be able to have a standard. Now, mind you, I know, ladies, like I, I hate to have the back and forth. You dig what I'm saying? We could talk about men. Men can say, oh, I want this type girl, this type girl. She got to do this, 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 and this, right? Cook, clean, suck, you know, run in the store. She got to look like this. She got to be like this. Da, 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 da. Boom, 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 right? As I say, I have no dog in this fight because my standard, which I don't even really, women going to treat me amazing, period. Why? Because the one before treated me amazing and the one before that treated me amazing. So, I got a real standard and it's not even a you got to do this. No, if you're unable to do this, I have to get someone who can. That's a real standard. If you go to a restaurant and they say they're a five star restaurant and you see roaches or the food not hitting, you, you're allowed to leave. Like, oh, yeah, this ain't up. This ain't meeting my expectations. Cool. But fellas, y'all got to already have had that type girl before. All I attract that I lock in with, they have to be beautiful in my eyes, right? And in my opinion, if I've had a woman around me, she's universally attractive. What does that mean? She may not be your type, but you can't say she's ugly. What is universally attractive? Your Beyonce's, your, 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 your Holly Berry's. Now, mind you, those are physical attributes, we not talking about the inside because then that's where I go on a different level and just deal with people who have good hearts who love themselves. A lot of people that we see today, they're not in love with themselves. It's hard for them to love themselves because of the things of others. And again, we was having this conversation. I might just have to call her up. We was having this conversation. A lot of people's love language is what they were lacking in. So if you get a girl who needs quality time, her both her parents probably work. If you get a girl who needs word for affirmation, she probably was never told she loved a lot growing up. You know, and we all got love language. I'm not saying that's 100% for everybody. You dig what I'm saying? Because as I look back at my life, I really wasn't deficient in none of the love languages from my parents. You dig what I'm saying? Like, 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 dad, like, I wasn't deficient. Like, they loved me 
properly. They gave me all the attention I needed, all the gifts, all the love. You dig what I'm saying? All the quality time, the education, you know, the conversations, you know what I mean? Without any manipulation. It was just yes or no around my household. So my standard is peace. Even though we went through struggles, I was raised on love and not survival. There are times where struggling and survival is different. Survival is every goddamn day is scraping to get something. You know, survival is 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 different than love. Like, hey, all right, today we ain't got such and such. We eating Raymond noodles, but the house is still love. We still rocking with each other. Survival is they ain't even got the Raymond noodle money. You dig what I'm saying? Like they can't even do the bottom of the barrel meal. Like, you know, being able to have a meal and not have a meal is different. So when you in survival mode, you don't think properly. You dig what I'm saying? You doing anything to get to that goal that you have. So back to my men, back to my ladies. Y'all have to realize the difference between what? A standard. Y'all do know what a standard is now, right? Something that you're used to. And a desire. A strong feeling or wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. Look, look, look down there. It says strongly wish for or want. Let's let's let's. Oh, that was it. OK, cool. <clears throat> we can hit it in different dictionary. Did y'all want to hit the Oxford Dictionary? See if it says something different. <clears throat> A strong wish to have or do something enough money to satisfy all your desires for something. A strong desire for power, desire to do something she felt an overwhelming desire to return home boom okay you know what i mean like i don't i don't i don't want y'all to think that this is a one-sided let's 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 just make sure we tapping in so let's make a phone call can we do that let's make sure the bluetooth is hooked up let's make a phone call and see if any woman agree with me i don't know let's see so we're gonna let y'all know this is a real phone call y'all see it up there you dig what i'm saying y'all know it's the real deal but um good morning we 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 was talking about right here on this ugly truth podcast i don't know if you was tuned in to hear uh about you know standards versus desires and how women say that y'all want us to lower our standards but how is it a standard if you never had it and i just wanted a woman's perspective a woman of quality women who have put the work in verified themselves uh have the results of that you know have men treat you properly uh so you know you are in my book um approved to speak on this situation because your results that you have been able to get from the work that you have put in give you the validation to speak on this so real quick what 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 is your opinion of women's standards versus women's desires well a lot of women come up with standards because they have based on their desires and really it's I was tuned in earlier and really it's just a lack of understanding mm -hmm. so they don't understand that the difference between a standard and a want which a lot of us I'm not going to say us, I'm not going to include myself in that but a lot of people don't even understand the difference between a goal and a wish so it's just you know in all you're getting you have to get understanding so if you understand that a standard is something that you've had and or something that is easily or readily attainable because let's say for instance professionally you have to meet standards right correct when you they have a job or something correct you've had to already do it right so you have to meet the standard in order to attain the position or maintain the position and sometimes in professional settings the standards change the standards will increase or they will be adjusted and you have to meet those standards and if you're not there, you have to get up to par. Bars. I don't know if y'all breaking down, picking up what she putting down, but she said the standards could change at times, meaning that you're going to have to adjust, which means that you have to continue to grow. So the work that you put in to get there, you can't stop. You got to continue. 
I'll I, I'll put it because uh, uh, both parties do a lot of this, which is working out. You can't have a goal to get your body in a certain shape and then just stop once you get there and think it's going to stay in shape. If your standard is good, is is good shape, you know, abs, ass, you know, uh, whatever else that women may want out of working out, you can't get to it, obtain it, and then stop. It will go away. You have to continue it. At minimum, you have to maintain it. Then if you want to get better, you got to put more work in. So I definitely agree with what you're saying. Um, so, of course... We are solution based. How do we help men and women understand that they can't keep using the wrong terminology and they don't really have standards that they have desires? How do you how do you break it down? Because you're a woman. You can't speak for men. I could speak for men. How do we help the women understand that? Ma'am, this isn't your standard. You've never had it. You've never had a nigga that makes six figures. You've never had a nigga who was balling. You've never had a nigga of any status. You know, your your last two baby daddies are are, are regular degular niggas. You dig? And no disrespect to any man or anything like that. You know, you could be regular and there's nothing wrong with it. But now all of a sudden you wake up one day with two kids, uh, 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 two baby daddies, and have done no different work than you did to get the same two niggas that you got pregnant with that don't want to be with you. And now today you wake up and say that you're going to get what we call a high value man in today's market. You're going to get a quality person. You know what I mean? You're going to get like, like, what's the real net? Now, we're not talking about the exception. What's the realness of a woman who have done no different work, got two kids by two different niggas. Neither one of her niggas is super niggas. What is the chances of her getting this high desire? Well, first of all, you have to look at the criteria that you have and when people say they want a quality man they don't even understand what the characteristics of a quality man is because what we're doing is we're dumbing it down to the point we're saying I don't want a broke man well you don't even know the difference or the qualities that wealthy men possess. So instead of saying, I want a wealthy man, you should say, I want an ambitious man who has lots of drive, who's driven, who believes in God, who prays regularly. You know what I mean? We're looking at, quote unquote, standards instead of quality. So we're looking at the so low-hanging all, fruit instead of the roots? Shift. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, we have to, we have to shift our lens first of all okay how do you so, do that though hold on we got to do one thing at a time we know they're a little slow how do you even switch how do you shift your lens how do you even do that um and and, and let's do this real quick because you know i like to talk to 25 and younger for the young ladies how would you tell a young lady whose mother has two kids three kids three days from baby daddies and that's all she's seen how does she shift her lens from that well she has to be real with herself and her situation so let's look at, let's put a mirror up to our mother, to ourselves. Really, how was that? Do you approve of that? Not do you love your mama? We all love our mama. Do you approve of the way that that would, could she have done it differently and would it have affected you better? So what we have to do is be what we want. So if you want somebody who is driven, then figure out your purpose and have drive to get there. Then naturally, driven men will be attracted to you. So we have to become something that what we want will attract. So if you're not something that somebody, you, you speak about men who make six figures, that's a thing amongst our culture. I hate the conversation surrounding a six figure man. Here we are. Okay, if that's what you want, what do most six figure men look for? They look for someone who looks a certain way. Men are visual creatures. So, first of all, you have to, and not, not to say necessarily physically, 
Um, your face is your face. But are you polished? Most of the six figure men I want, I I am attracted to. They want somebody who's polished. So you can't leave the house with a bonnet on talking about you want a six figure man. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to ask you to do something because I said I ain't going to make this too long. What is your definition? Because we use a different word than high value man around here. <clears throat> what is your definition of a super nigga? <sighs> um, I don't have, per- perhaps I should really sit down and come up with, I can give you a few qualities. Yeah, give Spoke me some qualities, qualities and characteristics of a super nigga. First of all, in order to be a super nigga in my <laughs> in my in my eyes from my perspective, first and foremost, you have to be a believer in God fear. And in our society, once again, let's keep what's first supposed let's keep it first. Okay? So God fearing you got to be driven. You got to be ambitious. Ambitious. You have to be a hustler. You have to have personality. You, uh, let's see. Are you able you to complain? To able to drive. Are you able to complain as a super nigga a whole lot? Super, super niggas cannot complain. Super niggas must be solution based. If if a super nigga is at the best you can vent for a minute and in order to come up with a solution. And usually I've not met one that complains. I've not met one. They don't do that. And so with that comes a lot. To be that person's support, you got to be sturdy. Oh, yeah, because if you're dealing with a super nigga, you got to put a lot of hats on. You got to wear a lot of different hats. You have to, to wear a lot of hats. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this question. What three, just three. What three things can a young woman, 25 and under, do to prepare herself for a super nigga? Now, there's a bunch of different things, and we know there's different things that people choose people on. But the standard, some of the foundational base things that a guy is going to look for. And what, what's three things a woman can do to prepare herself to? OK, yeah, perfect. Prepare herself because Esther did what? And I'm going to let you answer. But I just something just came to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Esther prepared herself for a year, y'all. And guess who helped prepare her? Her uncle. The name start with an M, like it wasn't Melchizedek or McCarter. Mac- Mac- I forget how you say his name. But if you go read the story of Esther, her uncle prepared her for a year for the opportunity to be in front of the king for about five seconds because the king was literally going through women, like, ah, oh, no, no. Yeah, put her to the side. Where's it? Die. To find him a new wife. And you know why the king was looking for a new wife? Because his old wife disrespected him at a party. So he got rid of her. He called her to come. She said no. He got rid of her. She ain't fall in line, do what she was supposed to do. He got rid of her. He said, I want a new one. He said, it's going to be at this time. You know, all the people that was around him bring y'all best. She had to. He taught her how to think for a man, from a man. She had to bathe for a year in different frankincense and myrrhs and whatever else that she was bathing in. She had to learn how to cook. She had to be prepared. So guess what? By the time she got in front of the king, she was a wife. She was just not married. There is a difference between a married woman and a wife. We associate wife with with being married. You can already be a wife and possess the qualities that it has to be married and not be married. And that that is the key. So the Bible says when when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. He didn't. It, it doesn't say when he finds a woman and she changes into a wife. You absolutely have have to be a wife before you get married. So what's three things that they could do, and they could be simple. 
even if you say cooking you can say listen get a recipe book out and cook once a week we got to give some concrete things to our young ladies because this is solution based what is three things that you would recommend that you would say um are foundational and they're always going to be able to use them how can they prepare themselves i'm gonna give you a minute you got four minutes i'm gonna let you get okay so I hopefully I won't use them all. So first, I would say to condition yourself. So just like physically, when you want to accomplish something, you have to condition and you go through conditioning process. So I would say condition yourself to be a wife, to be a companion. So number one, practice. Practice praying. Um, practice covering yourself. Sometimes you have to lay hands on yourself because it'll be a time when you may need to lay hands on your husband. So first I would say pray, read, gain understanding of the word, read Proverbs. If you want to be a good woman, read Proverbs and break it down and understand what it means to be a Proverbs 31. It says in the Bible, the idea of Proverbs, wife is loyal, merry, capable, and strong. Find out what those qualities are and do the best you can to understand and become that. Number two, practically, yes. A lot of women, single young women, you walk in their house, it's nasty. They don't cook for themselves. They eat out every day. And you may find a super nigga who doesn't mind eating out every day, but practice cultivating a home for yourself. Make I'm it look and smell I'm gonna give you good an extra minute. Yourself. I'm going to give you an extra minute because I got to elaborate on that. Women, y'all are the leader of your households of health. Y'all have been assigned the health of the household. If anything is going on in that house, you have the ability to feed them the right food. That's why you have to learn about herbs. You got to learn about spices. You got to know what foods do what. You got to learn about recipes because you can literally shift your household with the proper food. The reason why a lot of things is going on, a lot of these little niggas is wild and a lot of these women is hoes. I was just watching a video and dude said something that i never looked at before he said do you realize how many fights go on at mcdonald's and popeyes and you know these uh fast food chains he said it's low vibrational food so they low vibrate and so they can get into that when you feed your husband boyfriend kids higher vibrating food more solids and and, and things that create the the molecules in your body to do different stuff if your man's attitude is a certain way, you can food feed him a certain food. You can tell if he ain't digesting the food right. You dig what I'm saying? If he backed up, there's certain foods you could give. Y'all are the leaders of your household of making sure that they're eating properly because the food was made with love. The difference of the food that we eating out, it is made with the attitude of that nigga who do not want to be there. My son used to work for Popeyes and he used to hate it. So y'all was getting food while he was flowering the chicken. He was an attitude of I don't want to be here and you getting the food after he put it in fried and cook it and they give it to you or the girl who don't want to be there because she got kids and then they going to hand it off to the person who at the window and she don't want to be there. So now the food is passing on the energy of I don't even want to be here and got an attitude and you eat it and wonder why you feeling a certain way. Yeah, your food literally goes directly to your cells. For instance, if, if you drink, uh, if, if you make your family green smoothies for a week, they have all new cells from the chlorophyll in the smoothie. So, yes, that definitely, and that's a part of cultivating the home and cultivating your environment for what you want it to be. So, Okay, um, so so continue. I'm gonna I'm gonna interject and help you because you got two you had two great points, which is conditioning yourself. We put up the definition of the condition. It's the state of something with regard to its appearance, quality, or working order. So you gotta condition yourself. So meaning you can't wake up one day and be something that you want to be. You gotta put the work in. Then you said, you know, basically Proverbs thirty one woman, um, being able to maintain a house. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, maintaining the house is keeping the house clean, cooking and all that type thing. So go ahead. Those are those are two practical things for you ladies to do. Start preparing yourself and acting like you already have a husband. Start cooking for yourself, keeping your house clean, 
cooking good foods knowing what foods do recipes having you a little garden in the back go ahead to point number three whatever it may be and you can elaborate because i took some of your time so we're gonna bless you with an extra 60 seconds so the third thing i would say is to really work on regulating your mind and your focus and your mindset so Obviously, like we, we put number one, fix the kingdom of God and make sure that you have your prayer life in order. But when I say your mindset, I mean, improve yourself mentally, read, learn how to make some money for yourself, whatever your craft is, sharpen your craft, whatever that is, whatever your gift, tap into your gift so that your gift can be a blessing to the man that you want. So... Your gift may be, you may have worked front desk for somebody. So you have great organizational skills, things of that nature. You may be a teacher. You may be an attorney. Whatever you are, make sure that you hone into that and keep your mind open to being able to bless your man with your gift. So, um, and also figure out how you can adjust those things to include your husband because at uh, at the end of the day that's the ultimate goal is to have your your husband your man your person um and combine your life so yeah i would say definitely get your mind oh and check your attitude and the way you speak you can practice in the way you speak to other people just other men in general even other women and um make sure that you're being a woman, being that you're feminine, because a man does not want another man. If that's the, if that's the point, he will be homosexual. He wants a woman, and they want softness from us because they have to be hard in the world. So practice being soft, and you don't have to be, quote unquote, a punk. Just be soft. Because you can control and you can influence with softness as well. So practice being soft, being feminine, while being intelligent and powerful. Bars. Bars. Femininity is actually the power because if you're not arguing and fussing with a nigga, there's nothing for him to argue and fussing with. And then he's more subject to do as you need to get your desires fulfilled. You did. Hey, so we we, we got it on the screen. <clears throat> things to prepare condition you know we talked on that be a homemaker your prayer life having a good mind and your attitude so would you say it would be a good thing for them to be able to learn how to deal with difficulty to deal with um uh yeah difficulty um just different circumstances in life how you reply versus how you react how you respond and reply if they exactly. can practice on that of not proving your point to someone that you don't need to prove a point with so basically i'm gonna elaborate on what she's saying so in your prayer life as we read this morning on bible time with the king is talking about discretion when you have discretion and you know what a fool is you don't argue with a fool when there's someone it says a foolish person does not want to know the truth they only want to get their point across and rebel they only want to scoff at you meaning they only want to clown with you they want to bring you down to their bs so as a woman once you see that this person has no desire to even be on the same page you you ignore that and you remove yourself from that situation i want to talk to the men but i think in my opinion i want you to tell me if it's different now mind you trying to smash a woman and trying to be with a woman i believe is two different things i think niggas try to smash women out of their league but i don't think they try to be with women out of their league because they know that they ain't gonna be able to keep that up but i think men know you got to have your mind right to get your money right, to have your body right, to be able to even have the kind of girls that a lot of people say that they want. So I, I don't know. Do you see it in the community of men trying to keep not not smash? Yeah, because niggas is going to try to smash whatever woman that y'all feel is the most attractive and he ain't got to have a dollar. But do you feel men are trying to keep these women and they don't have no motion they they not you know they don't have no what they call status 
you know what I mean? Meaning they're not respected by other men. Do you feel that that's a large problem in our community? The men are trying to get women who are wives and they're not prepared to be husbands? Or do you feel like most of these men know what they can and can't do? Mm, I, I don't feel like on either side, it's, it, men in our society today are not being prepared to be husbands either. Okay, so, elaborate. El 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 elaborate because I got a different outlook, but elaborate. Right. So, what it takes to be a man, everybody wants the respect. When it's time to talk about being a man, everybody wants to be a man until it's time to be one. So, being a man, yes, you get a certain level of respect, the utmost respect. Once again, we live in a society of complaining men. In my book, that's not a quality of a man. If you're a man and you're complaining, that's an oxymoron to now, me. Hold, hold on, hold on. We, let, let's talk about that. Are are we mm -hmm. are we talking about these podcasts or are you talking about the men that you see every day are complaining? Because I think that's two different things. I think um, the All podcast... right. How many men do you, do you encounter throughout the day that exhibit? true honest manhood well honestly i think that um you're around me enough to know that I'm not around the nigga i'm around the hoes all day <laughs> i don't kick it with niggas and the niggas that i would stamp or solidify they all across the city the ones the, that you would stamp the ones that you would stamp. That's what I'm saying. The ones that I would so stamp. So we're not often just talking about. Ask me. No, I'm not talking. Again. I'm saying those are the ones that you would stamp. That's just like asking me about my circle of women who all married. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody I mean? is married <laughs> in your circle. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Married or have been married because it's a few of us that are no longer married, but it's been to the point where, yes, we were the caliber of woman where somebody decided, yes, I want to spend, I, I want to marry you. You know what I mean? So, ask so, the question. We're getting off track. What do you want? Do I encounter men that do what? Complain? Complain or exhibit all of the characteristics of being a man and a husband. So being a husband carries a lot of weight. It's not understandable. Just a title. Let me answer the question. I'm not being funny. I don't think that I am approved to answer that because all due respect, like I'm not being funny. You don't see me hanging out. The only man's that you can probably see that I hang out with is my oldest son. I got a partner. You know what I mean? Shout out to my partner. We 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 kick it, but we don't see. I don't really hang with niggas, and that is something that I need to fix. I need to get around more super niggas and more great men, but I don't hang around niggas. You dig what I'm saying? Like everybody that's helping me right now in my circle, ninety percent. I ain't gonna say everybody is a woman. Okay, so I have um I don't even know what his his title would be, but I have a very awesome person who helps me with all of my houses and endeavors and businesses and does it and he, he does my lawn and I, I, don't, I don't know because I just don't want to call him my yard man because he more than that he does everything the man rarely complains he has attitude issues certain times but how often do we hear Aaron complain oh no um he may complain a little bit but he moves on and out of a one through ten, how often does Aaron meet or exceed expectations of what I need him to do? Well, listen. Okay, no, we talking about a man. We talking about a man. This is a great example. This is a great example. Okay, he meets what he basically the good outweighs the bad. Let's just say that whatever he does in his work ethic outweighs whatever short term is he may have and that's a good metaphor to use and let's look at that though so in that aspect is he consistent is he reliable if he says that he's going to do something or be somewhere do you 100% believe it 
is his word his bond not necessarily all the time no i don't think nobody 100 percent of the time is, is i don't is, think anybody is 100 percent of the time but i do believe as a man your word has to be your bond okay you cannot you can't break your word go ahead you can't break your word as a man so that's a good idea and this is what i think we do with our men a lot well at least he well at least he well look at him he better than it let's not compare ourselves to the least no let's let's not compare ourselves to the least but let's be realistic now this is a good conversation so sometime Aaron come through and sometime he don't more or less I'm gonna give him an 85 15 right so Aaron gonna come through 85 percent of the time he say he gonna come through not only is Aaron gonna come through he's gonna exceed 90 percent of the time of what I want to get done like all right do this and he's gonna get done too fast I'm gonna have to find other stuff for him to do to get it done now mind you this person is a dra- a jack of all trades most of his work is not going to be in the hall of fame but the price the timing and the ability to get it done and the availability because other niggas be two three weeks out and i can call on aaron and he can get it done and which might take a nigga four days aaron's going to do in a day and it's going to be uh um i don't even want to say a third it's going to be way less than half of the price that someone else so you gotta what you call pick your shit I would rather deal with on the business side a man who comes through 85 percent of the time and 100 percent gets done what you need to get done versus the nigga who came over the other day and looked at my ac unit took 50 dollars from me and never came back and showed up like nigga came but didn't do what he was supposed to do cool whatever you know bro if you finesse him for 50 dollars use a hoe go ahead on about your business i ain't tripping about it you dig what i'm saying take that go on about your business but put it into context real quick so we can stay on task is we got to look at the standard of what we're holding people to now mind you do i be frustrated when he don't come through yeah but if i really look at what he's done and what he's exceeded so i would say this ladies if your guys exceeded your expectation and sometimes he falls short you're gonna have to have that grace like because you're so used to it you have to give grace and you have to determine what's important what do i always say keep the main thing the main thing so if he does something you don't like um whatever it may be i don't know every man is different they also so different and they're all the same right so you have some men who may want to be compressed by playing a video game you may have somebody else who wants to go play golf you might have somebody else who um, spend some time outside of the home with, in the community coaching football because that's his hobby and you want time at home. But if this man is doing most of the things like we talk about, you're going to get 80% of what you need. But let's talk about these standards and the qualities that are important. What does Paul give six things that the man of God should pursue, right? Elaborate. Righteousness. Okay. Paul gives six virtues righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. So I, go I believe go, gentleness. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Um a lot of time and so that's the thing. You have to be compassionate and kind, even as a man. And I think our men struggle with that because they're trying to be hard. <laughs> no, no, no. It's because some, I can't speak for all, but because it's so much disdain. And something that we've seen that is very important that should be brought to America is that young lady is still in jail in Dubai because she was yelling at a man. She said the man was yelling at her, so she yelled back. Once you come at that man with that energy, and even if he's yelling, as you said earlier, that softness, will have him shut up like you know what she ain't even going back and forth like man i told you to do such and such you can just gracefully bow out or oh i have something for the women i'm sorry to take you off i have something for the women that's something that worked for me when i was recognizing at a very 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 young age how to because a lot of these things are interchangeable with life and relationships it's just navigating you teaching them how to navigate again to put it in perspective 
25 and younger. Especially because a lot of times, though, we'll, we'll, we'll go out into the world, and men and women both do this. We go out into the world, and we handle people properly, and we speak to people the way we're supposed to in the world, but then we don't bring it home. And we talk reckless to our partners at home. One thing I started doing a long time ago is I hit you on my mouth. When I feel myself going there, in whatever direction I'm going in, it's nothing to take a beat. That doesn't mean I have to shut up permanently. I am pressing you on my mouth because guess what? We can't take that. We can't take the words back. Bridle your tongue. Bars. Biblical bars. Press the mute button. Be quiet. It's okay to be quiet. And I think a lot of times. Say that again. Women, Say that we again. Feel so. <laughs> be quiet. All right. Go ahead. Be quiet. It's okay to be quiet. Like, and I get it because sometimes as women, we feel so misunderstood and we feel so unseen and unheard and people are not getting it. Talking louder is not going to help them get it. So just be, as a matter of fact, being quiet might get your point across a little bit better. And it'll allow you, whatever you do in your moment, like you say, Lord, help me find a word. Because the Bible says pray about everything. Pray without so, ceasing. So you, you ask God about everything. And that's, that's really the key to all this is what we're talking about as far as husbands and wives because we exclude that. When he getting on your nerves, ask God, how do I deal with this man? How do I help him? Okay, understand? let's 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 be realistic, right? Like so let's give a scenario. She's misunderstood, they standing in the kitchen. It's starting. So this right quick, I always got a sidebar. So it says it's better not to start a quarrel because it's like opening up um, a barrel of water and how can you stop water once it starts flowing? Long story short. So the quarrel is finna get heated mm -hmm. and they going back and forth and they in the kitchen talking. Well, I said, and he's raising his voice. She raised her voice. He raised his voice a little louder. At that point, what should she do? When your man, if you really trying to have this dialogue, is you got two options. When your man raise his voice, lower yours. Because when you lower your voice, he has to quiet down in order to hear you. If he doesn't quiet down, he can't hear you. So, yell, once again, yelling is not, no one is hearing when you're yelling. Now, everybody have a good argument every now and then. It's, it's human. You know what I mean? Cool, as long as the main thing is the main thing and we attack in the problem. As long as the main thing is the main thing, but you're not at, at the point where you're yelling at each other, you're not, you're no longer so attacking So again, the what do she do? Do she leave, walk away, and go pray? How does she do what you're saying? Like, hey, pray. Okay. What does she do? Give a practical, you don't have to give okay, a literal kitchen, It's getting heated. It's getting you're, heated. You're in the kitchen and get, it's getting heated. Pause. Let him get it out. Be quiet. Whatever he say, let him say it. And then, okay, if, if what is your main thing in that moment? All right, you're raising your voice at, at me, and I, I feel it well enough in my spirit. Babe, why are you yelling at me like that? Can we just talk regularly? I am, not because you're not again. understanding me what I'm saying. I'm talking to you. I'm telling you what I'm saying. And apparently, I got to raise my voice for it to get through to you. Okay, babe. No, you don't. Okay. So I, do you, you know understand what? what I'm saying then? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to understand. So let's talk about it. That just I'm worked. I'm trying to understand. That just worked. Because there's something inside of a man once that respect level is there. Or, or we we don't even have to use the word respect. Once that challenging... Ooh, that's a bar. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Once that challenging factor is removed because now we're feeling challenged in the wrong way once you digress from that challenge and say hey, look i'm not trying to challenge you i'm trying to get an understanding a man will hear you out because a man's goal is to walk on water fire rocks heat hell to please his woman so when do she go pray when do like all right let's just say all right boom like that situation just went. Pray to that moment because when he yelling 
tune it out. Press mute. Pray right there while you listen at it. It don't have to be, you don't have to get on your knees and go to your prayer closet every time you pray. Just take a beat was what I'm saying. Take a beat. And you have to do this with your children. You have to do this in several different situations. So do they have to put their feelings to the side since women feel so much? They feel, 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 feel. And that moment when she feels like she's not being heard, doesn't she have to go against those inordinate feelings to be able to get to the goal she's trying to go to? Or is she able to stay in her feelings? You have to reel it in and push down. Let me tell you this from a woman's perspective. Although I'm saying to be quiet, I'm not saying that it's not a sea of emotion inside of you because as women, yes, we're feeling it very heavily. And in the moment, like when people, I wasn't raised with people raising their voice at me. So I get emotional when people are yelling at me. I get like period, like I'm I'm angry. I'm I'm feeling a whole lot of emotion. So I don't deal well with people yelling at me. So you, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have that approach, and it takes two people. This man has to have his emotions in check also because you got some men out here who don't have control of their emotions. So you have to have two people who are in control in order for this to work. Because if you got a nigga who, who about to bust you upside your head and you saying, babe, that, that's not going to work either. Because something you want that click, that switch click, is out of here. Right, but is that then, often? But, but you gotta assess that before you get to that level with a man and determine if that's what you want for your what's life. What's that? What's that word called? Discern. I, yes, discretion. You gotta have discretion. Y'all both can't be hot headed and 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 trying to have a romantic relationship. But before we get out of here, I'm gonna tell people this right here. Right, the coldest, the best, the most encouraging, the most uplifting, the most significant, the most rewarding relationship that a person is gonna have is their relationship with their Lord and Savior. If you dealing yeah. with a person who is always going outside of themselves to get validation, going outside of themselves to get answers, it's going to be a whirlwind on a regular basis. You got to have somebody that's tapped into the tap in of the tap in is that they're going to God for things. And as a woman, y'all can say certain things to us to make us think. Right. So we tell you all our vision. Y'all repeat it to us. Help us do it. But if you was to be like, babe, is this the way God wants you to talk to me right now? Y'all can check us with love Because the way two men talk to each other We could go at each other's throat And be cool right afterwards Like if anybody ever seen Lean on me How them two niggas argued And then come on Let's go get something to eat That's not the case with When men and women go at it Because there's two different challenges Going on There's the There's the feeling of This nigga don't love me Nor respect me And then there's the feeling For the man of You disrespectful And I can show you What your mouth can get you there's a problem when a woman use her mouth for a weapon and a man use his hands for a weapon on her. But that's what happens. That's that's it's almost I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's a very common cause that once a man to put his hands on a woman, her mouth been running for a while. He would told her to shut up several times. He would told her, don't say it no more. More than once. Hey, listen, man, shut up. Let's just talk about something real quick. We got three more minutes, but. That story where that young man just shot and killed that boy who punched that woman, which he shouldn't have put his hands on. What did he tell her? Shut up. Don't say nothing else to me. And what did she do? She continued to talk. Now she to traumatize her 14 year old boy. I'm just saying from both perspectives. You know what I mean? That boy should have never touched that woman. I agree. Cool. She could have solved that whole situation by removing herself from the situation. All right, this nigga ready to beat my head in. But no, she kept talking. That man was hot. I'm telling you, shut up, man. Don't say nothing else to me. Ay, 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 ay. Boom, he hit her, the little nigga shoot. Bow. Okay, cool. That's how the scenario played out. In hindsight, we could look at it and say, okay, these are two people arguing. What was the woman supposed to do? What was the man supposed to do? At the end of the day, the woman really kind of controlled the situation. Now, if she was to be quiet and not say nothing, he hit her. Or if she removed herself, yeah, pop that nigga. But if she would have shut up, I think that situation would have went totally different. If she would have pushed the mute button for a moment, I think that situation would have went totally different because women are now stepping, some are stepping into the role that I could do what you could do. You can't talk to me no kind of way. Yes, we can. 
That's why men run the world. I can say whatever I want to you. You can't. And this is even with men. Men can say whatever to any man as long as they can whoop their ass. You can't say nothing to me, player, if you can't whoop me. And that's how men view things. The way we talk to each other is the level of respect that we have for each other of what's going to happen. Because if you call me out of my name or if you do something that I don't like, it's finna turn violent. Period. Women are, are, are wanting passes for using men language and fighting terms and all. Oh, no, well, you shouldn't hit a woman. I just disagree. You talk like a nigga, you're going to get this work like a nigga. You understand? So that's the thing that you said was very important. Women got to learn how to hit the mute button, remove themselves from environments, and stop trying to prove that they this, that, or the third. Now, mind you, Shouty could have pulled out and popped him. Boom, whatever. And that still would have been a problem. Because women have egos or whatever you want to call. I want to be. No, at this time, it's not time for you to be heard. Now your son is going to be trying. He's 14. He just smoked the nigga. So it's two things going to happen. Three. Hopefully, you know, he got the Lord and Savior. He'll be all right. And, and, and God will help him out. Two, he just smoked the nigga and got away with it. He's going to go on a smoking spree. Or three, he's going to be traumatized because he's going to be having to deal with that shit at night. All because his mama didn't know how to shut up. And we could see it. I want you to, you could play devil's advocate. Why do she got to shut up? You can say that. Why Why she got to shut up? Why he couldn't just, it's not the case. Once a man is in. I believe two people, two things can be true at one time. Once a man is in, go ahead, go ahead. Sometimes you have to reduce yourself and keep the main thing. As a mother, it's your job to protect your child she didn't do a good job at protecting him because you can't be fighting this man and protecting your child at the same time because hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. i understand to a certain degree but as a mother how is it your is it your job to protect your child or prepare your child in that situation that we're talking about it was her job to protect her child yeah and, and, and in that, that situation but i think in our culture a lot of women well of course they are in the role of the nigga so yeah they're protecting their child when they should be preparing their child which means they should be nurturing and having their child prepared for certain right, situations right so somebody prepared that young man <laughs> to bust to that ass <laughs> and, and pick up the heat and do what he had to do so somebody prepared him for some now I don't know who taught him that who prepared him for that but at the end of the day in that scenario, I'm talking about me as a mother have been, you know, one of my pet peeves living in a city when it, my son was younger was for a man to come up and beg for money. I didn't want him to see that because even sometimes it'd be on my heart to give, but like, you don't see me with my son. You know what I mean? So I believe in, you if you're out with a 14 year old. If, if you're out with a 14 year old as a mother, it's still your job to make sure he's good. You protect them. So I'm not going to get in an altercation with any man with a 14 year old boy. He got hormones. He's trying to stick his chest out. I wouldn't argue with a man in public with my son there to this day. He's 20. I'm going to try to avoid conflict because I don't want to see my son crash out because he's going to crash out behind me and I know this. I don't want to see any man that I love crash out behind me. Now, if it gets to that point and I can't avoid it, that's one thing because everybody knows I'm not confrontational. So I'm going to try to avoid it to protect my grown son, especially my 14 year old son. That's just me. So I'm not trying to place blame on that lady. I wasn't there for the whole scenario. No, no, I, I, did I agree. See when he told her to be quiet and I did see where she kept talking. Did she deserve to be hit? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. And, 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 and for me, I don't know that family. I'm not, I'm just using y'all scenario as a learning point, I, I'm not trying to say if she's right or if she's wrong, but I can say she's right or wrong from a teaching standpoint. That situation is that situation. But I want to say something that came to me and I keep saying the Holy Spirit bringing. They were getting some low vibration food. If you think about it, I said that earlier, look where they was at. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If she was preparing food at home, this situation would have never happened. 
if she was cooking for her kid at home and listen to the people like oh well we can't go out and get nothing to eat that's not the point we could go out and get something to eat that's not the point but if she was making food at home for that young man with love and not at a low vibrational place you can avoid a lot of things the bible says a smart man sees evil and he hides himself a fool sees evil and pursues and suffers the consequences and are punished the point of it all is say staying out the land of the fatherless in my opinion the land of the fatherless is the hood so it's certain environments that you don't need to be in after a certain time after a certain place i mean there's certain places that you just shouldn't be going everywhere ain't for everybody you can't have on the attire of a harlot and expect niggas to treat you like a queen and what is the attire of a harlot when any man can look at you and see body parts and skin and arouse them in a sexual way what women don't know and i don't think they associate the two you are marketing yourself once there is a sexual vibrance that you're giving off of the way that you look that's the reason why they wear what's it called a habad hijab whatever they call it and they covered themselves in the bible and every religion say cover yourself so that men are not sexually aroused if you go out here and you got a mini skirt on and you got your side boobs showing you dig what i'm saying all your legs is out and you got no panties on and you're surprised niggas is getting at you it's the same thing with attitudes if your attitude is provoking a man what do you think is gonna happen i don't believe in raping no woman i do believe that uh uh if you jump in the pit with alligators you're gonna get your ass ate if you go in an area where a bunch of fatherless niggas is dressed half naked these niggas is gonna get at you and it's possibly you gonna be raped is it right no but is it reality yes these are the things that happen what is the chances of a nigga walking around with thirty thousand dollars and a hood that he's not from counting it around a bunch of other broke niggas it's probably likely they finna line little homie up or big homie up because you is out of bounds and that's the thing of saying when you see evil hydra you out of bounds don't be out of bounds so with these so-called standards that you women have you're out of bounds you don't have standards sweetheart you have desires so the show today was standards versus desires let's use the right word an episode before that y'all could go see it was independence versus interdependent in my opinion a woman cannot be independent and be in a relationship because it means not relying on another source not relying on another for nothing not being under no one's authority if you have these standards and you've never had them if you have standards and never was able to have them them are not standards they, those are desires you cannot have standards that you never had now you can have desires you can have once you can say i am now seeking this in my life and i'm not saying that y'all can't have that but a standard is something that you're used to as we get ready to close out i want to make sure y'all understand a standard is something that you're used to a standard is the norm a standard is not a desire i can't say oh okay well every day i want to my standard now is two million dollars a day whoa player so you go from making three million in a year to two million in a day that's your standard or that's your goal and if you look at any business their standard is only what they done the year before now that's the standard once they did okay last year we did 350 million dollars you know cool that's the standard now that's the that's where we want to keep up they can't say the standard is 700 million they never made 700 million they can say that's the goal or the projected sales for this year you can project sales but it's not a standard again that's their desire to get there so i want to make sure that we understand the difference between standard and desires so that we can have these proper conversations and we can actually have proper dialogue and put ourselves in the proper positions because you want to prepare yourself as she said you want to condition yourself you want to check your attitude you want to pray you want to read to be able to get to your goals so what you ladies have is goals y'all don't have standards oh y'all want me to lower my standards no we're not even telling you to lower your goals if that's your goal that's your goal what we're saying is what work are you putting in to get to your goal there's 500 positions in the nba and there's millions of niggas playing this game every year 
there's thousands of college kids trying to get to the nba every single year thousands hundreds of thousands trying to get 500 positions what are you doing to put yourself to get a f one of those 500 positions and that's what we're saying to women what are you doing because a great woman is going to get her doors beat down to put the bid in oh she good i i uh, everybody's going even the bible says another man has to see your value if no one sees your value you're not valuable to that man vice versa we could talk to the niggas you can't be you know uh uh having no motion going on no purpose living no 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 type of excellence in your life and you want this woman to cook clean and then you want her to go to work too and you want her to raise the kids too and you want her to go half on the bills that's not going to work like that now mind you when y'all younger i think it's better for young folk to get together and they could come up and get it out the mud together but once you get over the age of 30 for a woman you need to be dealing with a man that's on point and fellas once you get over the age of 30 you need to be dealing with a woman that's on point that's already trained let me tell y'all something before we go and i'm trying to hurry up and close you can't fix their mind they mind is they mind you can only find somebody that was a part of your tribe man that's all you could do is find somebody that's a part of your tribe meaning they think and have your core values already and you can add to what they have that's the only thing you could do is add to what they have you can't convince them to change their core values because it is impossible that's who they are at the core you cannot change that i don't care what religion they believe in they're still going to have core values and belief systems that are e unerasable their hard drive is their hard drive if you're not able to put their your software on their hard drive there's nothing you can do we can stop the conversation by just choosing properly take a quick assessment is this person meant for me to help out in my life because i told my mother the other day a woman has to feel like her mission in life is to deal with a nigga like me to help me fulfill my purpose if that's not her mission if she wants to have this super career this that, that that's cool i know that's not for me though and we're trying to change people to fit us because they have five out of the ten things that we may want and now we're trying to change them to get to 10 out of 10 but that's not what they're called to do you have women that are called to help help me all women are called to help me but in today's time you got women who want to go 50 50. you got the boss broads who want to have the boss relationship you got women who want to do nothing you got women who actually want to lead niggas hey my ideals are better so everything is okay just pick your shit of what's gonna make you better do you got any last words before we tap out Basically, my, my last words would be to work on yourself. All this relationship, yes. ideas, suggestions, tips, whatever you want to call it, is null and void if you haven't done the work on yourself and became the person that you're going to add value to any relationship that you're in. So do the work on yourself. Be happy with yourself and where you've gotten the point that you've made it to and then bring that person into it don't bring some mess into anybody's relationship don't do that so definitely work on yourself and um you become what you want to attract oh that's a bar we ain't even gonna jump into that because that'd be a whole new episode but definitely become what you want to attract i definitely agree on that y'all can follow us on all the social media platforms the ugly truth on tiktok uh the ugly truth on instagram facebook all social media platforms we got a website that's coming up it's actually in the process of being built right now so we appreciate y'all for tapping in with us man today's episode was standards versus desires putting thing in a proper perspective uh we have queen medina and king edward we are now signing off and we appreciate y'all until next time goodbye hoodie oh boy <laughs>